Welcome back everyone. From our previous video, I hope we are now aware about the basic concepts of multi-threading in Java. If you have not watched the previous video, the link is there on the top right corner of your screen. I recommend you to watch it to refresh your basic multi-threading concepts. Now in this video, we are going to demonstrate how we can create and run threads using multiple ways. So without any further delay, let's start. Java has provided different ways using which we can create and run threads. First approach we will see is using thread class. Thread class is available in java.lang package. It contains a very important method which is run. To implement multi-threading using thread class, we need to override the run method after extending the thread class. And whatever business logic we want multiple threads to execute will be written inside that overridden run method. Now enough with the talking, let's go ahead and do some coding. Now this is my service class thread IMPL. Here we are just making the thread to sleep for 2 seconds and then printing the thread name which is currently executing this particular code block. We can assume that those 2 seconds is the time taken by actual processing in the service. It can be reading or saving the details from database or files or any other processing as well. Now let's try to write the client code to use this thread IMPL and run the code without using multi-threading and let's observe its performance. Now in the main class, let's say there are 10 different requests which wants to execute the logic which is present in service class. So for that, this is a for loop iterating through 10 times creating 10 different objects which represents 10 different requests and calling the execute logic. Now let us run this program and observe the output. Here you can see the execution is sequential that is once first request completes only after that the second request is picked up for the execution. As there is an execution time of 2 seconds for each request then for total 10 requests the time taken will be 20 seconds. So how we can improve this performance of simultaneous requests using multi-threading? As we can see from the output currently all the requests are handled by main thread. But if we create different threads for different requests, then we can make use of multi-threading and execute them in parallel as well. To make this code multi-threading capable, I'll make this IMPL class extends the thread class and then override the run method to cover up the business logic. So here I have extended the thread class and uh, I have overridden the run method and we have just copied the exact whatever business logic we were implementing in the execute function earlier in the run method as well so that we can see the performance based on the same business logic. Now let us write our client class with the main method where we will create the objects of this thread IMPL as multiple threads and start those threads as well.
here in the for loop i am creating 10 thread impl objects and starting them at the same time before the for loop i have printed main thread starts and after the loop i have printed main thread ends i have done it to show you that those 10 threads which i have created and started in the for loop are independent of main thread for the execution sequence that is main thread may complete executing start and end statements before the threads in for loop now let us run this program and observe the output one warning here is that the execution sequence of these 10 threads along with the main thread is can never be determined it will always be unpredictable So here you can see clearly in the output that main thread execution completed even before any of the other created thread starts their execution. So why is that? The reason is when we have executed t.start in our code then that did not start the thread execution but it will make it runnable. If you remember from our previous video where I have explained the lifecycle stages of the thread in Java, runnable is a state when thread is ready to be picked up by operating system thread scheduler. So once it gets its chance, it will start its execution and as all these threads are of same priority, thus execution sequence only depends on the implementation of operating system thread scheduler. Now this was the first way of creating and running multiple threads simultaneously. Please do let me know in the comment section if you have any doubt in this. This was the most basic code. In the upcoming sessions we will learn more advanced concepts and then implement them as well. Now let us check another way using which we can create threads. It is using runnable interface. This interface itself is implemented by thread class also. Runnable interface is also available in java.lang package same as thread class and this particular interface only contains single abstract method which is run the one we have overridden which was also present in thread class due to this the interface has also been marked as a functional interface the concept of functional interfaces was introduced in java 8 but this interface was present way before that in java thus after java 8 it was marked as a functional interface so if you are interested in learning functional interfaces or any other java 8 features please check out the playlist from top right corner of your screen or you can access the playlist from the description as well now let us move ahead and create the threads using runnable interface Now this is the runnable IMPL class I have created which is implementing runnable interface and I have overridden the run method same as I did for the previous example. The only difference was during the creation of thread objects. If you see the whole business logic is same because I have copied the same uh, implementation of this run method from the earlier thread IMPL example. So the difference was only during the creation of thread objects. So how we are creating thread objects here? Here I have used one of the overloaded constructor of thread class which accepts one object of a runnable and name of the thread. So in the case of name of thread I am just passing my thread hyphen and the value of i from the for loop. These are the only changes we need to make to start using the runnable implementation. Now let's try to run the program and observe the output.
Here you can see the output is similar to the previous example. Only difference is the name of the thread which was prefixed as my thread in this case and the value of i which is 0 to 9. And also you can see the total time taken is around 2.6 seconds only. But if you remember in our first example, when we were not using the multi-threading, the time taken was more than 20 seconds to execute the same logic by 10 different requests. So here we can see using thread class and runnable interface, we are able to do the same thing. So if both of these ways does the same thing, then why do we have two different ways to perform the same operation? That seems redundant, right? Even though both of these does the same thing, but they have their own use cases. Let's try to understand what are their merits and when to use which method. If we use thread class, then each thread creates a unique object and gets associated with it. On the other hand, in case of runnable, multiple threads can share the same object. Due to this, using runnable is more memory efficient. So if memory is the concern, then it is always better to go for runnable implementation. Another use case is, suppose your main class needs to follow inheritance and extend some other classes as well. And as multiple inheritance is not applicable in Java, then using thread class is not a good solution. Because if we implement multi-threading by extending thread class, then we may not be able to extend any other class in that service class. But if we implement runnable, then our class can still extend the other class if required. Let us discuss another use case. And before that, let me open the thread class and see what all things are present in thread class. So here you can see other than the run method, it has so many other methods and fields available. And if I open the runnable interface, then we will be able to see only one single method, which is run. That is also an abstract method. So the next use case is based on that only. We should implement multi-threading using thread class only if we want to override the other methods or want to utilize the functionality which is available in thread class in the form of other methods. And only if the run method overriding is required, then it is always best to go for implementing the runnable interface. Now only two things left in the basic thread creation. One is how to do all this in functional programming way. We can do this using lambda expressions. If you are not aware about the concept, please go ahead and check out the video from top right corner of your screen. And second thing is, suppose if we want to return something from the thread execution, then how can we achieve it? Because the run method do not return anything. I want you guys to try it out yourself. If not, I am definitely going to cover these two things in the next session itself. So if you think this video was useful to you, please give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and share it with your friends who are preparing for interviews or wants to learn multi-threading. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.